Just when it seemed as though Gabriel Moreno was untouchable, an AL East rival swooped in and expressed interest. So we'll break that down. And the first major domino has fallen in free agency. So we'll break that down and much more on this episode of Jay's Digest. What's up, Jay's fans? I'm your host, Peter Rionis, alongside co-host Nick Goss. Got a lot to get into today, but first I want to thank you all for the support. We're so close to 4,000 subs. Yeah, it's been unbelievable. Very quick reminder, 81.7% of you guys who are watching are not subscribed. So if you enjoy the daily content, make sure to hit the subscribe button as it helps towards our goal of 4K. We have a lot to talk about today. We'll just get right into the first topic. No need to wait anymore. Potential trade with Rays. Now, I know that sounds shocking. We were shocked as well. And uh, I'll just pop up the screenshot here. After losing out on Jacob DeGrom, the Rays have identified catchers Sean Murphy and Gabriel Moreno at the top of their trade board and plan to pursue trades with both Oakland and Toronto per league sources. Now, we've uh, drafted up a couple of trades. Peter, when I uh, when I told him this, he's expressed his di- you know his disbelief, disinterest. So I'll let you uh, I'll let you take the floor here. What are your thoughts on uh, this report by this Twitter account who has I believe twenty k plus followers? Disbelief, disbelief is the right word here, Nick. Uh, first, two things don't make sense in that tweet for me right there. After the Rays lose out on Jacob Degrom, as if they were going to get Jacob Degrom, they. That's uh that's two thirds of their payroll right there. That that wouldn't make sense. And second of all, the other part of the tweet that doesn't make sense is uh, they will pursue a trade with Toronto. Why, why the hell would Toronto and Tampa Bay make a trade together? First, I'll tell you this. Okay, um, I know I'm going on a rant here, but I I don't like it. I don't like it because why would we ever trade with the Rays? Whoever we give them will torment us for years to come because the Rays' development system is just unbelievable and just find a way to make players good. So I would never, ever, ever trade with the Tampa Bay Rays. Yeah, I kind of agree with you there. I'll pop up the screenshot one more time. Like you said, after losing out on Jacob deGrom, so maybe they were going for him. You know, I did see some rumblings that they were you know planning on making an offer, but that would just be, they, they signed their biggest contract, I believe, the other day. So to go up to Degrom up to two hundred million, Zach Eflin, yeah. yeah, Zach Eflin. Yeah. We'll, we'll get into Degrom signing in a uh, in a little bit here, but man, very interesting. And let's uh, let's do something we haven't done in a little bit, and that is whip out the trade uh, machine. So let's get into the first trade here. Blue Jays get now. This is my trade, the one that I came up with, the one I saw floating around. So uh, Fairbanks and Glass now for Gabby Moreno. So we have Peter's trade after this as well. Obviously, we don't think that uh, we don't know. We don't know. It's possible. But what are your thoughts on this trade? Putting aside the bias that obviously they're an AL East uh, rival. What are your thoughts on the on that trade there? Just from a value standpoint. That definitely helps. That definitely helps the Blue Jays. It, it addresses some needs. Glasnow's dealt with some injuries. But yeah, I guess that is fair value for for a guy like Moreno. We might even need to give up a little bit more. But my my concern is trading with the Rays, giving them a player with control, and him just tormenting us for for years to come. That's my concern. I know Glasnow and Pete Fairbanks address two needs that we desperately need to address. But man, I'm I'm very hesitant to give um, anyone to the Rays who has a lot of years of control, let alone our top prospect, who has potential to be really good in the major leagues. Yeah, and like you said, I think we could get, I'll pop it up really quick again, I think we could get value like this across the MLB for Gabby Moreno, Not like doesn't have to be with the Rays, you can get a solid starter, which yeah. Glasnow is, and a very, very good reliever in uh, Pete Fairbanks there, but if there was the trade to be done, I think this would be the framework. I think it would be mainly pitching because obviously the Rays have an abundance of pitchers. They develop very well, which is you know the big scary part with the Rays. Not only are they an AL East opponent, their development is unbelievable, and they've always the uh, Gabby would probably end up hitting be a three fifty hitter with developed power, and he'd, <laughs> he'd be unbelievable. If it was with the Orioles or someone like that, maybe a bit easier to uh, to swallow. But with the Rays, it would be very very difficult. Uh. Um, I'll quickly pop up. This was kind of this is kind of satire, a bit of a joke. But this was Peters. He said, in order to give up Gabby, they would have to give us basically their entire team: McClanahan, Glasnow, Franco, and Fairbanks. Essentially, Peter, you basically implied that there's no way you personally would ever entertain a trade with the race. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't unless um, you left nobody to throw to Gabby Moreno. That's the only way I would uh, I would let the trade work. But it, I mean, in all seriousness, um, I just not a big fan of trading within your division because 
I don't think it benefits you in in any way. I mean, it it makes other teams better. Maybe it makes you better, but there's got to be a winner and a loser in each trade. And you know, often I don't want to take the chance of being the loser within a divisional trade. That's that's just my thought process. Yeah, it. I agree. If you're gonna trade uh, in your division, um. I think it has to be for like prospects that are several, several years away. And maybe you're going for a win now season. That makes a bit more sense. And that could happen, but this would be an MLB ready now prospect who would slide into the Rays lineup next year and would, uh, you know, terrorize us for, for years to come, but we'll move into the next topic now, but let us know in the comments what you think about that and what a potential trade could be, or if you want to entertain it at all, this is new part of Jays. Obviously we've talked a lot about Lars new This is just a little quick thing. Um, it, the name just keeps popping up every other day. And I, I personally am, I'm a firm believer that we're going to sign a free agent pitcher and then trade one of our catchers for a, for an outfielder. I'll pop up this, uh, this screenshot here. When you look, this is from an article, when you look at potential trades, it's going to cost you X players. And when you look at the free agent market, yes, it's probably just cash, but how much cash, blah, blah, blah. We're talking about time. It's not necessarily where you have to go out and sign someone for the next six years because we do have some catching coming. How do we sort and work through that? Most of the trades would be short term. Now, I was discussing this. People have been commenting all about Danny Jansen and how Danny Jansen is probably the catcher to go. And that was followed up by this where Morrissey goes on ESPN or MLB Network and describes Lars Neupar again in the clip. And he expects the Cardinals to deal an outfielder and mentions uh, potentially with the Blue Jays. So maybe this kind of correlates to the Danny Jansen for Neupar thing. An executive or whatever was in this was basically saying that a short-term option or, uh, is much more likely for a lot of the teams who are shopping their outfielders. And Morrissey goes on to say the Cardinals again. So what are your thoughts on that? I I'm I might be in the minority here. I prefer Lars Newtbar over Brandon Nimmo, and I'll, I'll give a couple of reasons why here. Uh, first, you're getting Lars Newtbar for I believe five years. He's got a lot of years of control, a lot, a lot of years so left. he'll be cheap. He he'll be very cheap to uh, to have in your team. Um, he's he's got a lot of potential. He's still not reached his peak as a player. Uh, I'd rather do that than throw a ton of money at Brandon Nimmo who's had one very good year and a couple of kind of unlucky injuries entering his age 30 season. I'm, I'm kind of hesitant to do that. And I'd rather spend the money that we have for free agency on a pitcher. So I, I think this is the best way to go about it. Lars Newtbar has potential to be a 25 uh, home run type guy playing center field. He's got a cannon of an arm. I mean, he the peripherals just check out. He looks good, a lot of potential. And we have the money to spend, uh, and we could, we should spend it on a pitcher in our rotation, like a star pitcher. Yeah, I agree. I'm uh, I'm I'm more on the side of trading a catcher for a uh, and signing a pitcher. I think that's kind of the best bet here, trading a catcher for an outfielder. And yeah, I love Lars Newpar. I think if we're gonna go for Lars, I don't know if Danny Jansen would do it. I, I don't think it would. But maybe if we throw in a few prospects in there, it would uh, it would be interesting. I just think, I would do it. oh, I would definitely do it as well. I think Lars is worth it. He kind of fits the timeline of our young players, like you know, Vladdy, Bo, and depending who we extend. But I don't know. It's another interesting thing to talk about. We've been talking about it a lot. I just I can't help but think something might happen with uh, with the Cardinals and the Blue Jays when there's smoke, there's fire, and we've been linked. We've been linked a lot. So we'll get into the last topic now, which is not as much Blue Jays related, but obviously Jacob Degrom has officially signed a contract. So. Any of you guys out there who are holding a little bit of slim hope that he was going to sign with the Blue Jays, we kind of knew. We actually mentioned it, I believe, in the last video or the video before that it was kind of unrealistic mm -hmm. to get DeGrom. There's much more realistic to get, you know, Verlander or um, or someone else. But I'll pop up the screenshot here, as I'm sure most of you guys have heard. Right-hander Jacob DeGrom has signed a five-year, $185 million with Texas. Physicals pass. Deal, uh, deal's done. Includes a conditional six-year option up to $222 million, Full no-trade clause. Wow, what a deal. Obviously, the Blue Jays, I don't think were... Uh, maybe if he would have came to the... If he was open to coming to Toronto, maybe the Jays would have offered him that. But what are your thoughts on that for, uh, you know, an AL uh, AL team in Texas and, I guess, an old rival? I'm glad they stayed away. I'm glad the Blue Jays stayed away because this is a ridiculous amount of money for a guy that's always hurt. And I love Jacob deGrom. I think he's the best pitcher of this generation. But I I just don't think it would be smart smart business for the blue jays to go after him and and i'm glad they didn't i don't know if they're going to go after a guy like verlander or rodan or somebody else for that matter but i think there's better ways to tinker with your roster than than to just throw money and try to buy a world series you got to be savvy about it and um the blue jays have never gone above the tax thresholds 
I think this would have brought them pretty close to that. And and it kind of would have hand, um, handicapped them in a sense where if they would want to make another move, it would be very tough to do so. And uh, Ross Atkins has always been very smart about the way he makes his moves. He's always been um, uh, kind of keeping everything uh, close to himself, not really revealing too much. But um, I'm glad that the Blue Jays stayed away. Obviously, the the thrill of having Jacob DeGrom in Toronto would have been unreal. Oh, yeah. Having a generational pitcher on the mound at Rogers Center and the newly renovated Rogers Center. But I, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of I might be in the minority again. I might get flamed in the comments, but I I don't think it's smart for us to go after him and the Rangers they they want to win, man. Yeah, they spent uh 550 plus million last year on Semyon and Seager and now they're spending another 185 on DeGrom and their rotation, they got Martin Perez as well. Other than that, you know, John Gray, their rotation still needs some work to be a World Series contender, but it's good to see them spend another, you know, another competitive team because they were kind of falling off there for a while. I think the only way the Blue Jays would have got DeGrom, which would never have happened anyways, would be like a two-year $90 million contract. Yeah. That's more in the Blue Jays' realm, but DeGrom was never going to do that. Maybe that's what Verlander, uh, I think Verlander's looking for like a lot more than that, though, like three years, 130 or something I was reading, something like that, but... It's going to be crazy to keep up with. Hope you guys are enjoying the uploads. We're going to have a lot of them. News is flying like crazy. It's that time of year during these winter meetings. And anytime an updated report comes out, we'll have you covered. So make sure to hit the subscribe button. And we'll see you guys in tomorrow's video.